Welcome to the short tour of Rational Requirements Composer Beta 2A and Lifecycle Linking. Today I am playing the role of Andy. Andy is currently involved in two projects and we will look at JKE Business Recovery Matters. In this project you can see that there are a number of members involved in addition to Andy, Bob, Tanuj, Curtis, Ursula, Deb and Al. As an administrator or as a stakeholder, my interest in this project is more as an overview to actually see what is going on to provide stakeholder contributions and so on. So I'm most interested in things like, are there any recent changes? Are there any artifacts I can create? What I've done is to actually have a viewlet here that I can actually use to sort of see what is going on. And I can see that there are a number of artifacts, the dates have changed uh, for this project. If there are other projects, I can have other viewlets. I can also see if there is any commenting happening on the projects. But also, more importantly for this project, I've created a couple of viewlets that allows me to show what is the core functionality, has it been implemented, uh, are there any test cases. Let's have a look at one of these requirements, allocate dividends by percentage. And you'll see it has a description, it has some tagging, it actually has some attributes, its status, but also shows any related links. Which test case are validating it? Which work items are implementing it? Is it embedded in any other document? Are there some features or requirements that satisfy this requirement? Is it illustrated in any UI sketch? So I can see this information here. Let's have a look at the work item. You'll see in this view allocate dividends by percentage. The DEB has actually signed this as a high priority. It's been planned for Sprint 1 and it's actually done. So it means it's actually been implemented. Let's look at the Sprint 1 plan now. From this developer's task board, I can see that there was a story associated with it and the task to implement it has been resolved. I can also view this as a work breakdown structure as well. Let's look at that now. From the work breakdown structure, I can see that Deb has some defects, has some stories that she's working on. Specifically, the one I'm interested on is allocate dividends by percentage. And for this requirement that comes from Rational Requirements Composer here, I can see that it was implemented by this task here. It was one week and its status is done. Let's go back to my dashboard now. In addition to the implemented work item, I want to see what's the status of the test. So I can do that by looking at this viewlet here. Well, I actually want to see what the test scripts that are planned I'm going to look at that now. And what I see from the test script is a number of steps. Log into the banking uh, website, allocate funds, submit allocation. So this is showing me the status of overview of the test, where it's validated, where it's implemented. Let's now go back to Andy's dashboard. From this dashboard, you'll notice that as Andy, I've actually made a comment on one of the projects, and I specifically directed it to Bob and to Ursula. And it concerns a business process sketch we have which is called Allocate Dividends Course. I was reviewing it and I noticed that there were some duplicate links and so what I did was I addressed this comment to them. It appears in their dashboard but just to show you where the comment is and how it relates, let's open that artifact now. And you'll see what it's done. It's to not only highlight the comment but it's actually highlighted where I've put this comment. And you'll see here that there are two links. As a stakeholder, I'm wondering why there are two links, so what I'm doing is asking Ursula and Bob, who are the authors of this content, to actually review this. In addition to the author capabilities of Bob and Ursula, as an administrator, I have the ability to here to actually edit, so I could edit this if I wanted to. So let's just quickly look at editor. And what you'll see here is that we actually have a number of palette information. We can add notes, we can add pools, we can add swim lanes, tasks, subtasks, nodes, and so on. We can also specify some of the font information. We can also do fill colors, lines, and so on. And so this editing capabilities is something that we can do online. As the administrator, I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to leave that to Bob and Ursula. So I'm going to cancel out of this now. As a stakeholder, I'm also interested in what else is happening on the project. So what I can do here is click this breadcrumb and navigate back to the project. And from this project page view, I can see that there are a number of project members. There are some snapshots that have been taken. There are some reviews which are ongoing. I can also see if there were any recent comments specifically. There was one for myself, but then also if there are any recent artifacts. What I also have the ability here is to look at some queries. We have a number of queries here. Some are shared amongst the entire project, and there's one that I have actually created for myself. So let's have a look at one of these queries, and we'll look at the business rules. And from this view, I can see the ID of the business rule, its name, obviously its type, its primary text, and which artifacts it's constraining. And in this column, you can see that it's constraining some features. It's also constraining some use case diagrams, a UI sketch, and so on. I also have the ability, if I wanted to, to actually edit some of these artifacts from this view by just double-clicking. This is just simple text here. Or if I want more sophisticated text, I can also edit the primary text as well.
and you'll see that from this primary text I have a number of formats, I have a number of font styles, I also have some sizing and colors and so on. And so I have the ability here to go in and make some immediate changes if I wanted to. I'm going to cancel these changes. I can also make multiple changes at the same time. So let's click this here. This selects all the artifacts. And I now have the ability here to go and say, well, actually I want to apply some tags to all these selected artifacts. I want to create a review for this. I want to move. I want to copy. I want to export. Or I can actually edit some of the attributes. So let's look at the attributes here. And what you see from this is that there is priority and status. And status has different values. And if I want to make a change here, I can simply say, well, what do I want to change it to? draft, under review, deprecated, or so on. So this is the ability to quickly make changes to a number of artifacts in one go. I'm not going to make those changes at the moment. I also have the ability to open actually the artifact itself in its own editor. I can see here the simple text, there's some related requirements. I can see the various attributes. I can see if there are any related links. As we say here, we've got a sketch, we've got another document, we've got a use case document. And it's this actual requirement or this business rule is actually embedded in a feature. I also have the ability to edit as well. Let's have a look at the editor now. Once again, we have the same sort of type of font, but you'll see in this view we have the ability to add tables, bullets, we can insert images, we can create links, we can indent. So there's more that we can do in this single editor than we can do in the other view that I showed you. We also have the ability to look at the history. So let's open the artifact history now. From this view, I can see that there actually have been a number of additions. I can quickly hover over and see that there were some text changes here. So I can see what happened. I can click on this and see that, OK, the text, there was no text there. It was the initial one that we created. But also, I can look at its change history and see, well, we actually added a tag here, release one, we added some core functionality, we made a change here, we added some description, we made its type of business rule, we set the status to approve. So we have this ability to actually look at the history of all the artifact changes, not only its textual, but its commenting, its links, and so on. Let's return to the current version now. And once again, we're back at this editor. Let's return to the project. Now we're back at this project view. Let's have a look at one of the personal views that I created. What I wanted to do is to see which were the high priority requirements that were developed in a particular release, but also was there any unattempted test cases, what its trace tree was, and so I've actually created this view. Let's open that now. From this personal view, what I've done is to actually select everything which is tagged with release one, is of type, feature, and user story, is approved, it's of high priority, and its test case is unattempted. And you'll actually see here that we have two high priority requirements, allocate dividends by percentage, as well as donor chooses an organization, illustrated by both a use case and a user sketch. And here are some business rules that actually constrains that. So let's have a look at the use case diagram now. From this, you'll actually see, as I scroll down, we have a number of information. We have the attributes just like anything else. And once again, I can actually edit this if I want to. Let's quickly look at that now. Once again, we have a palette that acts some notes, a constraints box, also does the texting as well. Let's cancel out of this. I don't want to make any changes. And let's go back to the previous view. Now we're back at the previous view. Let's have a look at the UI sketch that may be associated with this requirement. And in this sketch, I see that, that we have a title, we have a count activity, there are some things that people want to do, some action buttons, there's some tables, a summary of information, there's some notes that instruct me, a C separate slide for organizational list and so on, providing me some guidance as to what this user interface sketch should do. And once again, we can also edit it, so let's do that now. And as we see, we have a similar sort of palette, we can insert images and so on. And once again, we can set its tie, have all these sort of palette options to actually create what you see here. Let's cancel out of that. And let's actually have a look at some of the links that we have associated with this. From this, you'll actually see that associated to this sketch is a number of requirements or assets. We have the business process sketch. We also see that this sketch has actually been embedded in another document. Let's open that document. And in this document, you see that there's a review of dividend sketch and who was involved, Al, Bob, and Ursula. I see that there's some home page, what the home page may look like. I see my allocate dividend percentage, what that view is, but also some of the other embeds. And we can set things like a meeting date, an owner, and so on. So what we have here is that ability to actually see what is going on and being able to have a review and understand before it's actually implemented what it should look like. Now, obviously, this document is a fairly informal review. If we want to do something more sophisticated, we also have the ability of actually creating reviews. 
So what type of review may we want to create? Let's have a look at the project glossary. There are a number of terms that have been defined. You can see its name, its text, its various status. I can simply select all the items and actually add them to a review containing the, the items and then actually allocate those to the people that are going on. Now, I actually have a review already started, so let's quickly look at that now. From this review I started, I see that there were a number of participants. I had Al as a reviewer, Bob as an approver, Ursula as a reviewer. I see their status. I can see which artifacts that they've worked on. So there's some abstentions here. I can see that there's been reviewed. I can open up the artifact and so on. But also, I can see the comments that people have made. So let's have a look at that now. So I see that Curtis abstained from this because he was out of the office, uh, have no time to review the schedule. So I can see these in context. If I happened to be an approver, I could see it, make my own decisions about what I wanted to do about the review and so on. And so this gives us an ability to have that overview of what's going on and so on. Now obviously I don't want to look at this information completely all the time, but from the dashboard, let's go to that now. I have this review capability where I can hover over and see that, okay, the overall review has started, the due date of January 11th has passed, I can see its status. So this gives me the ability to quickly have an overview of the project. And through this navigation of linking of the life cycle, I have a great understanding as a stakeholder what is going on in this project. I'd like to thank you today for this short tour of Rational Requirements Composer Beta 2A. And if you'd like to find out some more information, I encourage you to look at some of the articles we have on jazz.net. Thank you very much.